Well, thank you all for, uh, for your patience. My name is uh, Cristian Ramirez, that's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, Ramirez, R-A-M-I-R-E-C, and I'm the Human Rights Director here at Alliance San Diego. I'm also the, uh, the director for the Southern Border Communities Coalition. Uh, we're gathered here today to mark the third anniversary of the brutal beating of Anastasio Hernandez Rojas, a local father, a San Diegan, who was taken from us by Customs and Border Protection during a horrible ordeal that was captured on tape. Uh, and those images uh, were transmitted across the globe uh, in an incident of excessive use of force that sadly left five local children without a father a, and a wife without a husband. Today, uh, we are gathered here to once again hear from not only the family of Anastasio Hernandez Rojas, but also the family of another local San Diegan, Valeria Monique Tachiquin, uh, a woman who was killed, gunned down by a Border Patrol agent in the streets of Chula Vista uh, late last year. Uh, her father is also with us here today. Uh, without any further ado, I want to just allow uh, Maria Puga, the widow of Anastasio Hernandez Rojas, to come to the podium and share with us how it has been the last three years uh, of waiting patiently for justice to be served. I must add, however, before I ask Maria to come to the podium, that although it has been an ardu arduous three years, we are committed to justice and we have never before seen a Congress that's willing to listen to border communities and a willingness from lawmakers to acknowledge that there has to be dramatic change in the way we carry out border enforcement policy in this country. No longer can we allow local residents to be killed with impunity, without any questions being answered, without any accountability, without any oversight. We're taking concrete steps to move in that direction, and we are uh, looking forward to more conversation in Congress to ensure that accountability and oversight are the law of the land. And folks in uniform are to be held to the same account as anyone else in this country. So we want to thank uh, Maria for being with us here today, for being a pillar of justice, for being a champion on accountability and oversight for Border Patrol, and, and thank her for her relentless effort to bring justice to her family and, uh, and to San Diegans. Maria. Ah, buenos días, este, gracias por estar aquí a todos ustedes. Como siempre hemos dicho, los medios han sido el eco para este caso de mi esposo, que son tres años, son tres años que hemos estado luchando, este, buscando la justicia. Es, hemos tenido avances, pero no hemos tenido la respuesta que nosotros queremos, que queremos justicia, queremos que se les sancione a estos agentes, que son muchos los atropellos que han hecho, hay muchas víctimas, han, son tres años de su, sufrimiento, desesperación, mis hijos, mis suegros, sufriendo por la pérdida de mis hijos de su papá, mi esposo, y estamos aquí pidiendo al señor, al gobierno, señores congresistas, que nos resuelvan este caso, ya son tres años, tres años de espera, tres años de agonía para nosotros y no es justo y gracias a la comunidad que nos ha apoyado los grupos este, nosotros vamos a seguir en esta lucha queremos que los casos se nos resuelvan no nomás Anastasio hay muchos casos pendientes y vamos a seguir luchando para que esto ya, ya se termine acaben todos estos atropellos, impunidades gracias I will try to summarize uh, briefly what uh, Maria just said. Um, she is thankful for the media outlets being here who have always demonstrated support in raising this issue and bringing it up as a concern for the greater San Diego community. It's been three years of injustice. It's been three years of agony, of frustration, of desperation, of not having answers from the authorities. Um, and now the focus will be on Congress and ensuring that congressional members take action to ensure that these types of atrocities do not occur um, again. Um, it's been a difficult uh, 
three years for the family, for the children, for Anastasio's uh, parents. Um, and for this reason, uh, she raises uh, her voice not only to lift up the case of Anastasio, but also to lift up the cases of so many others who have lost loved ones as a result of brutality at the border. Thank you. For the record, sir, what's your name? My name is Pedro Rio, P-E-D-R-O-R-I-O-S. Uh, with us today, traveling from the Mexican state of San Luis Potosí, uh, is Maria La Luz Rojas. Maria La Luz Rojas is Anastasio Hernandez's mother. Uh, she has also been a relentless voice in ensuring that not only elected officials here in the United States hear their plea for justice, but also that Mexican officials take uh, their shared responsibility in making sure that the rights of border residents are protected by both nation states. Uh, she, had, she traveled to Washington, D.C. two times in the last year. Uh, first time was on Mother's Day uh, of 2012. Most recently, in February of this year, she met with members in uh, the U.S. Senate uh, and with members of the Department of Justice. Uh, and uh, she has been a passionate advocate for uh, human rights for border residents. And uh, it's really my pride and my, I'm very honored to be uh, next to this uh, uh, heroic woman, uh, Maria La Luz Rojas. Bueno, mi nombre es Maria La Luz Rojas. Madre Anastasio Hernández Rojas, vengo a, en busca de apoyo y pues y gracias igual a los que nos han apoyado y que siguen el apoyo contando con ustedes, aplicar justicia sobre mi hijo Anastasio, que ya son tres años para el 28, ya cumplió tres años en la lucha de justicia y pues espero que se nos dé pronto. My name is María de la Rojas and I am Anastasio's mother. Um, it's been three years that uh, we've been uh, fighting for justice in this case. On May 28th, it was three years, um, the anniversary that Anastasio was beaten. Pues seguiremos en la lucha hasta que se nos dé, seguiremos tocando puertas y buscando su apoyo hasta que se nos haga justicia. We will continue to struggle to ensure that we find justice. We will keep on knocking on as many doors as possible to ensure that we continue to uh, struggle and find that justice that we deserve. Gracias. Muchas gracias, señora. Señora Rojas, muchas gracias. Uh, San Diego, unfortunately, has seen many of these incidents of excessive use of force. Uh, most, the most recent case was that of Valeria Monica Chiquin, who, the uh, native San Diegan, who was uh, shot and killed by a plainclothes border patrol agent uh, in Chula Vista late last year. And today, uh, Valentin Chiquin is here with us today to once again continue to raise awareness about the need for accountability and oversight over border patrol and to continue to seek justice for border residents. Uh, Valentin. Good afternoon, thank you for being here. Uh, I miss my daughter. Uh, I'm seeking justice. We all seeking justice. It's very unjust for us to be here without having any type of answers from any law entity. No one has come forward to let us know, to show us some type of a report, some type of a official matter, other than what I learned through the media. We're seeking justice. We're calling upon the Congress. We're calling upon the people who is in charge to change the reform in this country of us of ours. We need justice. We want justice. Please, 
please put yourselves in our shoes. If it was your daughter, if it was your son, what would you be doing? You there are in power. You, they're working for the people. Please, please, let's not wait another year. Whatever the answer is to us, give it to us. Help us. I can't go to sleep sometimes. I don't have any doubt that the other families are not able to go to sleep either. Please, ladies and gentlemen of the Congress, senators, you that are the voice in this country, you that are the ones who are imposing laws, please help us. Don't leave us like this for more years. Not only us, but the people behind us. What can I say? I miss my daughter. Nothing they now say or do is going to bring my daughter back. But please, don't let this happen to more families. We need accountability. Need people to be trained. Don't abuse the power. Do not please abuse the power. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Valentin. Valentin mentioned that we have been uh, seeking answers not only from the administration but also from uh, elected officials our federal elected officials to ensure that the voices of the border communities are heard, in, especially as the debate progresses in the nation's capital. Uh, Valentin has also led a delegation of family members who have been affected by, uh, uh, by abuse of authority from Border Patrol. And uh, next week, uh, yet another border delegation will be this nation's capital to ensure that uh, the voices of border communities are made uh, part of this conversation. It is fundamental that accountability and oversight are, are part of comprehensive reform. And uh, Adriana Jasso with American Friends Service Committee uh, will be sharing with us uh, the next steps in border advocacy uh, this week in Washington, D.C. Adriana. Good morning, everybody. My name is Adriana Hasso. I work for the American Friends Service Committee, Adriana, A-D-R-I-N-A, Hasso, J-S-O. And as Christian pointed out, the powerful voices we heard from Mr. Tachikin, Senora Maria de Luz, and Maria Puga will be the message that we will bring into the Senate and to the members of Congress in Washington, D.C. Uh, starting Monday of next week, uh, we are part of a broader, larger delegation of the border delegates from Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and obviously San Diego will be making um, our voices heard. And we will be asking basic and fundamental questions when we bring cases such as Anastasia's case and uh, Valeria Monique Tachikin. There has been a process of accountability and transparency in the Border Patrol. The culture violence that we continue to see, the loss of life perhaps would have been avoided. These are fundamental questions that San Diegans have the right to ask. And we have uh, a responsibility, a fundamental responsibility as community organizations, as family, and to continue to ask for justice. And to hope that the three years that the family of Anastasio wait since that terrible date of May 20 will not be the case for the family of Mr. Tachikin. It will not be three years for the case of Monique, that we will have justice for the case of Anastasio and that we will not and we share a responsibility in San Diego.
to lift the voices and to speak truth to power when we have to. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana. Uh, faith leaders have been a valuable component uh, in this conversation. They have not only accompanied families crisis of having to deal with the tragic loss of a loved one, uh, but have also reached out to elected officials to ensure that we have, we keep true to our values as a nation, and that we ensure that we keep a moral grounding that those that have the power in this country should not excessively abuse that power. And whenever they have done acts of abuse of authority, that they should be held accountable like everyone else. We are thankful for the leadership of the Interfaith Committee for Worker Justice, and we are proud to have the Executive Director of the Committee, Rabbi Lori Koski, accompanying us today. Rabbi. I'm Rabbi Lori Koski, Executive Director of the Interfaith Committee for Worker Justice of San Diego County. I bring to you here the heartfelt condolences, really, of members of congregations and of their leaders throughout San Diego counties. Christians, Unitarian Universalists, Jews, and Muslims gather to commemorate the deaths of your loved ones, particularly as we say that anniversaries of the time when our loved ones have left us and have died are days and weeks we all know that are so hard for us to live through because we're flooded with memories and of the regret. Today, I bring the support of people of faith from throughout California to these families. We bring the support of people of faith and of our leaders in San Diego to the delegation in Washington, D.C. In the past delegation, Pastor Luis Garcia joined these families to talk to the senators and members of the Congress about the issues affect us uniquely here at the border and how our traditions lift up the plight of the immigrant, those who cross our borders. We are here to remind everyone that the people who work at borders, both in enforcement and in service, and the people who cross borders are all people of faith. They are all created in the image of God and all, each one deserves dignity and respect. And that is what we seek and what we ask for when we talk about the of enforcement that would recognize the holiness of every person who would come into our nation and cross our border, both for those who are working at our borders and particularly for those who cross, the innocents who cross. We want to know, you to know, that the tragedies of the loss of life that happened three years ago and in this last year have become for us a beacon and a clarion call. And we seek to create in their name justice, justice that would move our future to a better moral grounding, as Christian has called it. But they are, in each one of these families, tragedies. Each one has lost a loved one who will no longer share his days of celebrations with them, no longer be present at the births of future generations in their own families, and it is our commitment that no people, none of us, should lose those who we love senselessly, and particularly through the innocent activities of living our daily lives. And so to you all, particularly to you who are mothers and wives and fathers, we bring to you our condolences and our pledges that people of faith in San Diego and our leaders will stand beside you as you seek and, be and find the justice you deserve. <laughs>